people I've met in Tokyo, Fukushima, and Nagoya told me about the vast potential of hydrogen in Japan. With such hopes for hydrogen, I wondered if it could help achieve the dream of sustainable mobility. Innovative people everywhere are driving the ambition of a clean, carbon-free future. I traveled to the Netherlands, in Delft near Rotterdam, to meet a group of passionate young students who've pioneered the hydrogen revolution in mobility. I had a moment to chat with the Forza team, a group of students who spent one full academic year working tirelessly on a pink, carbon-free, hydrogen fuel cell race car. I talked to a few of them. Do my, all right, sounds good. Our primary goal, it goes back to our mission, which is to promote um, clean hydrogen technology in the transport sector. If you tone that down to kind of really wh why we're here, it's to race a car very fast around the track on hydrogen power. And we race against petrol powered cars, just normal cars, in order to show the potential that hydrogen has and the future that hydrogen has in front of it. So who are they? Why do these students do what they do? I just finished my bachelor's degree, but I think there are very few groups in the world that allow people of my age and experience to do what we're doing, to make a hydrogen race car within one year and to make it go around a track as fast as we do. It's, it's really quite exciting stuff. And it's quite an honor to be able to be a part of this team. So that's a, a huge motivation. We are a really motivated team. We are fascinated by technology. We all study it uh, at the university here, and that makes it really, really exciting to work in this, in this environment because motivation of others motivates you, and getting the chance to work on a real project full scale is just a unique experience that just gets everyone super happy about it. Although there are ups and downs, of course. It's a hard uh, and uh, long year, but every one of us is making the best of it. The question that kept coming back to me was, why hydrogen? Why use fuel cells in such a competitive field? Hydrogen is something that's emerged in the past few years, and it's something that has a lot of potential. Fuel cell technology can basically be applied to any kind of mobility. Like, a race car really pushes the technology to its limits. If a fuel cell can work in a race car, it can work anywhere. Fuel cell technology can have a wide range of applications, and. I, I just really believe they can be uh, widely used in the future for many, many types of applications. The way they talked about fuel cells gave me the impression that there was some sort of higher purpose. I asked them if they felt like they were changing the world. We're definitely uh, putting some work into, into that. I mean, in the end, what we're contributing to is a, is a much big, bigger vision, the, the electrification and the moving towards sustainable energies and uh, sustainable technologies for the future. So in that sense, we are for sure contributing to such a vision for the future. I think it is important that we do find an alternative to fossil fuels and hydrogen, as I mentioned, it's becoming quite a possibility. But the only thing you can do is try. You have to try your best or else all is lost. <laughs> I was blown away by the drive and ambition of these students, the mindset of a new generation the way they decided to take on the Goliath of climate change with their own hands. But race cars, or cars for that matter, aren't the only thing that need an update. In the US, a massive shift is on the way. In a country where retail and e-commerce are two huge pillars of the economy, change can be seen at different levels too. In warehouses where millions of items are stored, some companies have started using hydrogen fuel cell forklifts instead of gas or battery-powered alternatives. And hydrogen-fueled vans and trucks are already on the road, delivering your parcels to your door. In a way, fuel cells are powering a small revolution in logistics. The next step of my journey leads me to the United Kingdom. In Oxford, I met with Joe Bamford, an entrepreneur who put forward a vision powered by hydrogen technologies. His company is making thousands of buses across the UK to further the zero emission ambition. Um, 
What's driving me on this is to think about the world and how do you get mass adoption of zero emissions. And for me, you get mass adoption of zero emissions when it costs the same, when it does the same, and when it's as easy to fill up. It shouldn't be anything special in reality. It should be just something we do as a matter of course. We think buses are a great place to start with hydrogen. There are 40,000 buses in the UK. Battery buses will do 60% of the distance of a diesel bus, so I would imagine 30% of the UK market will go hydrogen within the next five years. Joe Bamford kept telling me about the real goal. Make it as easy as possible for the user. When it comes to zero emission, there are two zero emission solutions, batteries and hydrogen. Why do I believe that hydrogen works better? Because it does everything that we have today. Hydrogen, we can make it as a wind farm, turn water into hydrogen, stick it on a truck, deliver it to a filling station, fill a car up in five minutes and off we go. It just works in quite the same manner and I think it has to be very practical, these mass adoptions. Don't try and change too much and human behaviour is the most difficult thing to change. Going even further, I found out about another use of fuel cells that is pushing this new reality into the realm of dreams. Beyond public transport or freight, innovation has changed the lives of a small crew. Alors, Energy Observer is a véritable smart grid flottant qui represents a cercle vertueux de l'énergie, associant la production d'énergie renouvelable avec la consommation de ces énergies. On stocke quotidiennement nos énergies à travers nos batteries, mais on n'en a pas beaucoup pour être léger. Et l'hydrogène sur le long terme. L'hydrogène, c'est vraiment notre prolongateur d'autonomie. C'est le couteau suisse de ces énergies renouvelables que l'on produit quotidiennement. This is Victorien Erussard, the skipper of the Energy Observer, a vessel that launched in Saint-Malo, France, in April 2017. It is the first in the world to both generate and be powered by hydrogen. Its expedition around the world provides durable solutions for energy transition. On a joué un véritable rôle d'ambassadeur avec les médias, les industriels, les politiques et les citoyens. L'idée c'est d'essayer d'équilibrer nos consommations énergétiques. Lorsqu'on n'a pas assez de vent, lorsqu'il fait nuit, lorsqu'il n'y a pas de soleil, on démarre notre pile à combustible qui nous permet d'aller partout autour du monde. The crew chose hydrogen for its characteristics. Pour moi, l'hydrogène est une solution d'avenir dans le sens où on peut stocker un maximum d'énergie dans un faible volume. Avec la mobilité des industriels sur cette production d'hydrogène et ce stockage et les différentes applications qui sont développées, je pense qu'on est sur la bonne voie. In Wales, I spotted a unique, fierce-looking car. I met with its designer, Hugo Spowers. Hugo is a motorsport engineer who had a business designing and developing racing cars, but something always felt wrong. And I got out of motor racing for environmental reasons, thinking that the only future for sustainable transport. Then I heard about fuel cells. And, and I realized that therein lay an opportunity for me because the technology existed, but we needed to build cars differently. Hugo and his wife Fiona are the founders of the car company River Simple. So it's not surprising that fuel cell vehicles are taking longer to come to market because it is so different to a combustion engine that it is much easier to design a car from a clean slate around the characteristics of hydrogen technology than it is to try and shoehorn the hydrogen technology into the sort of cars that we've uh, optimized for the last hundred years around combustion engines. I asked him the same question I asked the team at Forza. Why hydrogen? I don't believe that there's anything that can be remotely as efficient as a hydrogen car for the sort of range to which we've become accustomed. So that's why we're developing hydrogen cars. And it wasn't until I came across fuel cell technology um, that, I, that I saw a, a sustainable powertrain on the horizon. Hugo and his wife Fiona are dedicated to the idea of sustainable mobility. Our purpose statement is to pursue systematically the elimination of environmental impact of personal transport. I'm very optimistic about the future of mobility. We think we're so far from a sustainable system at the moment. We need a quantum shift. I think we're going to see huge changes ahead of us.
but those changes are now, I think, unstoppable. Unstoppable. When mobility is responsible for such a large part of global carbon emissions, those changes can come fast enough. From a dedicated group of students in the Netherlands to industry experts in the UK, from buses to race cars and forklifts, initiatives everywhere are popping up as proof that transport can reinvent itself towards a new, cleaner mobility model. I really wonder if hydrogen could decarbonize other sectors too.